Thank you very much. Uh, before I uh, answer the questions, let me first say the thank you to all of you uh, for being here. Uh, Pittsburgh politics is uh, kind of strange. It normally sends signals. If you have all the money, if you get the Democratic endorsement, if you get the endorsements of all the major unions, it's a done deal. It's over. No <coughs> need to go out. No need for debates. And so they weren't able to fool you. So I am glad that at least we're here uh, talking about the future of the district. I also wanted to add in my introduction, uh, I was born and raised, born here in the Hill District, born in Albert Square. We then moved to Bentley Drive. And then like uh, hundreds of families in this community, uh, we then moved to Northview Heights where I was raised. I am one of nine children uh, to my mother and my father. And uh, we had a lot of experience in terms of the important things that we should be involved with and the important things that we should be active on. Why am I running and why should you support me? Uh, I have um, the most experience actually in the seat doing the work. It's on a volunteer basis, it's in the Pittsburgh School Board, but it's still the same thing. The only difference is we're volunteers, there is no salary. Our budget is much larger than the city of Pittsburgh's budget and we have quite a few employees that we manage. Uh, as a, a school board district, I, one of the things we do as a policymaker, we set policy, evaluate policy, and we create policy. What's interesting for my candidacy and why I should be the next city council person is number one, I am a great listener. Number two, when you call, I respond. For instance, this meeting here this evening. It doesn't matter when or where you call, if there's an opportunity to <clears throat> listen, to learn, and to grow, I'm, all, I'm always available. The other reason why I'm running, and it gets a little sticky, is, is that uh, for the last three years, we have, we've witnessed a, a, a somewhat of a, 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 a nasty personal battle taking place on the pages of our local newspaper. Uh, with our incumbent and the former city council person. We want to get past that. We've got to get past that. And my candidacy hopefully will be a signal that it is time to move on. The Honorable Councilman Solo Dean made great uh, progress in this community and I hope to, to add on to that and to continue moving forward. Councilwoman Payne has made some great contributions. I hope to add on to that and we should accept that and then move on but to continue to see the bickering in the paper, we're, we're walking past and we're ignoring some missed opportunities. My final point on why I am running is that I believe we, with, through our leadership of our lack of leadership of our incumbent, uh, Mrs. Payne, is that we did not take advantage of three very important things. Right here in this community, there's the development of the, Penguin the, the new Penguin Stadium, there's the census, uh, or census 2010 who set up shop downtown, and then we have the casinos. As an elected official, it is not your job, it should have been your duty to be intimately involved with those opportunities for contracts, to provide services, as well as providing information on employment opportunities. Most of the crime that exists in this community is based on the fact that people don't have jobs and you don't have an income and it's difficult to raise a family when you don't have income. We could have not solved the whole problem, but we could have knocked a dent in that had we had a councilwoman who has met with all three of those entities and said, look, I am the elected official, you have job openings, I have the people. You channel your openings through me, I will set up a clearinghouse for District 6 and we will put people to work. She didn't do that. She was bickering with the former council person and we lost. The most important thing to do to advance your vision is you have to show up at this meeting. You have to be here, right? And so if you're concerned with moving an agenda forward, you would be here and you would take a part, be a part and would make it very clear I'm here with you at each and every time that you call. And so that's one thing, that's one the, the most important thing. In terms of developing leadership, it's not what I'm going to do. It's what I'm doing now and what I've been doing for the last 10 years on the Pittsburgh Public Schools as a volunteer. <clears throat> Working with our students, directing our students the importance of getting involved. 
I started the program 10 years ago where we encourage men to do nothing else but to get up, get out, and come to school and volunteer. When we get them in the buildings, we then teach, we get them to sign up for the PTOs, PTAs, and PSCCs. That's engagement, getting them involved and teaching them the importance of getting involved with their communities as well as signing up for those particular uh, uh, things in school. I'm doing that. The most important thing is to be a good listener. Second, make myself and my office available. And the third is when your issues come before council, it's important that you have a person there to articulate your concerns to make, for, make sure that your programs are moving forward. He or she must be at the table. He or she must remember that it may not be pretty all the time advocating at that council table where it gets pretty bloody sometimes fighting for, for tax dollars. He or she must clearly understand who they are representing. And at times it may be uncomfortable to stand when you're standing on behalf of your constituency. So that's one of the main things that I would do. In terms of the, uh, the mixed use, I'm at somewhat of a disadvantage because you're moving forward to it. I can only offer that I will continue to do what I'm doing on the, on the school board. Be a good listener and come listen to what your concerns are and then it's my job to execute it. It should not be anything that's difficult. The beautiful thing about what's happening here in this community is that you have millions and millions of dollars already being developed and so that's almost somewhat of your hook in terms of why it's important for the city to get involved. I will continue to advocate that. I am a great listener. Check my track record on what I've been doing and I want to continue to do it uh, here as a member of uh, P Pittsburgh City Council. You address the crime issue, everything else goes away. People are hungry. People are looking for jobs. People are looking for opportunities. And first of all, what's interesting about this city, uh, during the Steelers Super Bowl, we were the Steeler Nation. During the Penguins play, we were one big Penguins uh, family. We all stood strong and united together with the, uh, the incident dealing with the three police officers. But as soon as we get money, we all go in our separate ways. Stimulus money is a one-time hit. We watched the, the county got their money, they're going green. City of Pittsburgh said, we're going to do some infrastructure thing. Mark Roosevelt already started spending in the school board. We didn't even have a dollar yet. I would, pr I would uh, propose what I'm referring to as a tri-government YEP, a tri-government youth employment program. We forced all three of those government agencies to take youth crime and youth violence. You take it and you place it as a top priority. No more discussions. No more negotiation. You place it on top priority. Secondly, we, we have each governmental agency to give $5 million of each of their stimulus money, because you can't do it for free. You take that, that $15 million, you set it aside, you put it directly together, and you begin to train. You begin to get folks who can speak the language to come up into these communities and to get these kids into training programs, get these kids, in some cases, their young parents get them the necessary services that they need. We set a timeline, because I think that the stimulus money might be a two-year, we can do this. And if we can't solve it completely, we can sure knock a big hole in it. First of all, you need a strong city councilman who's going to be constantly whisper in the ear of the mayor, youth violence is a priority, Mr. Mayor. Youth violence is a priority, not the penguins, okay? Not, not, a, not a bike czar. A bike czar. Can you imagine that? We pay for someone who does nothing but a monitor, well, whatever he or she does, but a bike czar. And we have yet to commit any dollars or anything real to the violence and to what's happening out here. When you can get strong leadership, it would make it clear to the mayor that this is a priority for us. We want you to move on that yesterday. If you have to use your executive powers, then so be it. We're always talking about building partnerships with the different agencies. You stood with the uh, school district on the Pittsburgh Promise. You stood with the county in consolidation of services. Why can't we stand for knocking out the crimes, which is it's hitting and hurting everywhere. I'm a father of five. I got kids right now who can't go into certain communities wearing certain colors. Okay, I have a mother and I have brothers and sisters and, and relatives who can't go some a certain place because they say if it's still if it gets dark they're scared in the city. Let's put an end to it. We can do it. All we have to do is prioritize it, and you need a strong council person to do that. 
I'm the one who's ready, willing, and able to do that.